Did you actually train that gay name pronunciation in front of the mirror? Did you actually not train yourself to learn another language? I am actually surprised by the decision of HTC over Samsung, but I'm more surprised of you not wearing a Tommy Hilfiger. Yeah, I know. George Lopez. Right. That's right, it's that time of the week. I am Jaime Rivera. This is Pocket Now, and this is our Pocket Now Daily Recap for last week. Last Monday, I asked you, what did you think about Google choosing HTC over Samsung for the Nexus 9, as the rumors are that Google ended up deciding over HTC to help another OEM because Samsung was popular enough. We have 668 comments out of which Philip Pesek says, I think that HTC Nexus 9 will be perfect. And if that K1 rumor is true, plus HTC build quality and boom sound speakers, the perfect tablet, and I have to agree with you. No wonder you have so many likes. That really would be the perfect tablet, and I do feel that if Google wants to differentiate the Android tablet space, they need something like this. Then John Tatora says, Google boosting everybody. First it was Samsung, then LG, then Motorola, now HTC. Seems legit, though I guess Sony needs more help with that. Nexus would be a good camera for once at least, and that is such a great point. Yes, HTC is up next. Actually, HTC was the first OEM to help Google back then with Android. Now it should be the other way around and I do feel that Sony would be a good OEM for the future. Then another commenter says, HTC deserves it. Many people consider the one I made Google Play Edition the ultimate phone. I hope HTC nails it with a Nexus tablet 8 inch or 9 inch, both I guess, and I do agree with that. Yes, that would be a great option indeed. Then on Tuesday, I asked you, what did you think Samsung needed to do to regain its limelight as the company's share had dropped 15% just after the launch of the iPhone 6 alone? We have 1,552 comments. Thanks a lot, guys. Out of which Hackdroid says, so Samsung lost 15%. I think it's good for us consumers. That means Samsung will now try to get the market back by bringing new things to the table. I personally don't care who has the market share as long as it's beneficial for us. And that is probably one of the best comments of the week. Indeed, that's one of the good things when things go bad that companies do shake up and try to do things differently. Samsung's design language has been the same for years already and it is time for a revamp. Then the test says Samsung really needs to R&D with its touch was else. They will be soon competing with HTC and Motorola. You have a good point there. Uh, Samsung has been focusing more on hardware R&D and not really on software, at least it seems. Surely, we've seen a lot of motion gestures on Galaxy phones, fine, but they don't really work well, so that's not really good R&D. The YouTube guy says, Samsung is losing because people are now understanding they are a piece of S copycat company. That's probably a little harsh, but uh, in a way, I don't think people notice that, but you tell me in the comments, what do you think? Then on Wednesday, I asked you if you thought that the Bengate issues of the iPhone 6 Plus were real or deliberate as we did see iPhone 6 Pluses bending, but it's because people were actually bending the phones, not really because they were using them in their pockets and getting bent. We have 1,168 comments, thanks a lot again, guys, out of which Etria says, so it bends, will it blend? And uh, you know, that is a good question indeed. Uh, I'm sure that if you try to blend it, it will. Then Navar says, all phones bend or warp if you apply enough force. The complaint is that the iPhone iPhone 6 Plus is bending quite easily in comparison. Dude, I'm sure that any phone that I would grab and try to bend, I would. Surely you see those videos of people trying to bend other phones because they're plastic and magnesium. It's obviously not easy, but if you apply enough force, you make a good point. It'll happen. Then Sergio Velasco says, Jaime, did you not see Lou try to bend the Note 3 with much force? Man, I'm sure that I could try to grab this iPad and apply so much force that at some point I will end up bending it. It just happens. If you deliberately try to do something, it'll just happen. And this is not trying to be fanboyistic. The problem with phablets is that there is a lot of canvas size and it is more possible to bend that than a smaller phone. The bigger the product, the easier it is. It's just basic logic. Then on Thursday, I asked you if you think that Apple should replace all the bent iPhone 6 Plus models because, yeah, the company is apparently not replacing those that were bent deliberately. We have 650 comments out of which Abdul says Apple should replace the phones that is bent even on purpose because how can you spend a thousand dollars on a phone to be bendable so easily? Uh, I am going to partially agree with that. Yes, it is a very expensive phone indeed. Yes, we should assume that these products should not bend, but then again, it's like dropping your phone and assuming that it's not gonna be dented. And Alex says, of course, Apple should replace each unit. They should own up to the bag design. You don't see an iPhone 6 bending as well as the iPhone 6 Plus, and we go back to the previous segment. Surely, the longer the chassis, the longer the canvas, the more probable it is to bend. That's just the way it is. Then Guy says they should replace them all. Why not only nine devices that are bent? Oh wait, maybe that was a lie. 
true. It could have been a lie as well. We have no proof to show that Apple really only replaced nine phones. You have a good point there. And then finally on Friday, I asked you if you were planning to get the Galaxy Note Edge as uh, the rumors are that Samsung is preparing for shortages because this was just the concept product. They weren't expecting to sell many, apparently only a thousand phones or something like that. We have 123 comments out of which I can has upgrade says, I tend to not buy something until I know everything and it works fine. The Edge is just a beta of what could come later from other manufacturers and that's good behavior. Early adopter syndrome is bad. Uh, we could tell you a lot of stories. And Photographic Time says, I really want Samsung to push new ideas to the marketplace. Even knowing the Edge probably won't sell well at all, I am sure it will benefit the industry and I agree with that as well. I love the fact that Samsung is the company that is willing to do R&D and actually sell it. I feel that is a good mentality and the company has so much money that they're willing to do it. Great. Not everything is going to stick as well, true, but at least they're trying. Remember the Galaxy Note lineup? Then another commenter says, damn, well, I guess I'll just edge my way to the Note 4 instead. A real bummer. The possibilities would have been huge. Oh well, and I agree with that. I would have loved to try the Galaxy Note Edge. I mean, I wish that the company would build more, but I guess what we need to do is support it. If the phone is on sale and you're able to buy it, buy it and give it a try. If you don't like it, return it. I think that's a great way to deal with it. That's it for our Pocket Out Daily Recap. Thank you very much for watching. A couple of tips if you want your comments to be featured. Number one, keep them short. Number two, stick to the point. Number three, try to get some thumbs up. It helps us spot them a lot easier. You can also follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you next week.